Hi, I'm Armin and um, I just want to show you a small little Java program that I created. Um, uh, it's an ASCII-fine program, so pretty much what it does is it takes an input image and outputs a block of characters, which when viewed all at once looks like that uh, input image. So uh, the whole program is written in Java and I'll be putting posting links down in the description for downloading the program as a uh, program as well as the source code. Uh, it's released under the MIT license, so you're free to edit it and to redistribute it, copy it, and make money off it. Uh, everything. Uh, so uh, the code is annotated. So if uh, if you if you want to download the code and see how it works and why it works, uh, you're more than welcome to do so. And um, I will be going over the main part of the code, but um, this video will mainly show you the, the program in action. So let's get started. So in here, I have some images which I want to ask you five. So the first is uh, the Canadian flag. Uh, it's a simple image, just two colors. It should be too. Uh, it should be very easy to do. So uh, let's ask if I that first, flat.jpg. So let's set the program in action. So my program has a text area where it outputs the results, but the results are not as spectacular. So let's go back to the um, folder. And here you can see um, result.txt file. And if I double click that, you can see uh, the ASCII uh, flag. Uh, now the font, the font is a little too big. so. Let's change it to say six, and uh, it it uh, you can see that it's a perfect uh, copy of the uh, king flag, uh, all in ASCII characters. So once oh well, let's just move on to the next one. I'm going to delete this, and let's move on to uh, this image. Um, this is a, a picture of Simpsons. So we're going to ASCII the Simpsons. I have an app crash, alright. So it's image for a GIF. GIF file. Ooh. So let's change it here. For, uh, so let's run the program again. And uh, here you can again see the results as they are. Uh, being written to the text file simultaneously, you can see the results here too, and it looks okay. But I think it looks better on the text file, so let's check the text file out. And you can see the Simpsons ASCII file once again. Uh, now the font's a little too big because this picture is bigger than the other one, dimension wise. So let's choose uh, even four is a little too. No, well, those four is good. Let's just look at it at four. Uh, when choosing fonts, you have to be sure that you choose uh, fonts that are monospaced. Because if it's not monospaced, let me give you an example. If I choose something like Palantino line type, which is not monospaced, it's going to become distorted like that. Because all the characters have to align themselves perfectly. So choose something. It's, I, I recommend Courier always, but if you have Windows 7, then OCRA standard is pretty good. Uh, um, I, I'm not sure about the fonts on Mac, on a Mac, but if you but if you're on Linux, um, uh, then you can use Emacs to open up the results.txt file. And if you're on Mac, just download um, text edit. It's a free software, and uh, I'm pretty sure it has some on space fonts. So anyway, here's a picture of the Simpsons ASCII file. It looks pretty good, um, very sharp, and has a lot of detail. Finally, let's ASCII the Beatles. Not the Beatles, but their, but their logo anyway. And I think it's image 5. So let's go here. So, so let's delete this old results.txt file for the time being. And ASCII. And this again really simple because you only got black and white, so it works very nicely. But for a more spectacular result, this is TXT and looks really good. Um, it looks the, the thing in the thing about the, the, the when choosing a font, you should also be sure to choose a font which uh, which has the same length when you go from one character in there, uh, row to row and column to column so that it looks perfect. If it, now, if I choose something like Prestige Elite Standard, which is also pretty good, um, what's, what's going to happen is the the, Im the text file, it, the image that you see is going to be 
uh, is going to have greater height than width, even though it was a perfect square. And that's because um, uh, the length from the distance from one uh, from one row to another row is more than the distance from one column to another column. So this one's going to happen. And um, so this is a program. This is the code which is making it all happen. I'm just going to go with the main part here. This is just standard GUI stuff. What this does now, this is the main part. So first, we're reading in the file, and what we're going to do is I treat through every single pixel in the file, get its RGB value, get about 29% of the red, get about 59% of the blue, and about 11% of the green, and add them together. And what does that give you? Well, that gives you the grayscale value of the pixel. So it'll be something from 0 to 255 because the RGB values are then from 0 to 255. If it's if it's 255 or if it's a really high number, a large number rather, um, your pixel is going to be very bright. But if it's something that's lower, then your pixel is going to be very dark. Now we're going to pass that grayscale value into this method called the return string pause. So in the written string pause value, what's going to happen is it's going to look at the grayscale value, and depending on the grayscale value, it's going to return a, a certain string. If the grayscale value is really uh, is a large one, that means the pixel is really bright, and it's going to uh, return characters, which, when viewed, is uh, are going to make the are going to come across are going to be viewed by the eye as very light. For example, a period or an asterisk or a colon when viewed by the eye looks very bright. But if the grayscale value is really small, it's going to choose a uh, ASCII character which, when viewed by the eye, looks very dark, such as the at 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 an at sign, the, the number sign. Eight, the uh, number eight, and so on and so forth. So, I got nine different um, characters here, but I encourage you to actually edit these, add more, and and even change the characters because these work good, but I'm pretty sure it can be done much much better. So, just work, just play around here and try to hack it. And um, in here, um, what this does is pretty much the same. Written string negative. What it really does is. Um, it takes the grayscale value, and if the pixel is really light, it's gonna. Uh, uh, it rather, it's not, if it's not dark, it's gonna um, return a string that, when viewed by the eye, looks very dark. So, for example, if it's really light, if it's if the grayscale value is over 230, that means it's tending towards white, the, towards the white end of the spectrum. It's gonna return the at symbol, which when viewed by the eye looks very dark. So, pretty much the same thing as this with the uh, characters flip around. And I, I use this sometimes when um, I want the, the colors of the image to be inversed. So it's pretty the same thing. And finally, I have a small little print method here, which prints on the text, prints on the data to the text file, a helper method. So this code is annotated, so you can actually look at uh, um, why, how each function works and the, specific, the specifics of each function. It's again releasing the MID license, so uh, you can do whatever you want with it. and. Um, um, the links for downloading are in the description below. If you have any questions, please post a comment on this uh, video or on the blog post I'm going to direct you to. And um, uh, all in all, I hope um, you learned something out of this video and uh, see you the next time.